Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you husky! Gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon! A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, it's not too late. If you hurry, you can get in on the greatest offer ever made by the breakfast cereal shot from guns, delicious Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice. There's nothing to send in for. There's no waiting. Listen for full details in just a few minutes. The Yukon snow was in perfect condition for the biggest race in the Klondike area. Indians, Eskimos, French Canadians, men from Alaska and men from the States began moving into Dawson three weeks before the dog sled race that was to decide the championship. There were rich prizes for the driver and owner of the winning dog team, prizes for the man who built the sled and for the one who trained the dogs that pulled it. And there was glory for the town that provided the winner. On the street and in the stores, as well as in every cafe, the big race was the subject of all conversation. Yeah, your Huskies may be fast, but they're not in a class with Dick Martin's team. Well, Penny, a lot can happen before that race is finished. I'm going to count on a few things besides the speed of my dogs. I'm going to count on you and Jules to help me win that $5,000 in cash. Yes, everybody, listen to me. I'm proposing a toast to the Dawson City Champion. Young Dick Martin. Yes, yeah. uh, Dick Martin. Our Dick Martin. Dawson City Champ. Yes, 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 yes. uh, Dick Martin. Uh, the way he's talked about him, Dawson, one would think there is no other dog man in the Yukon Territory. Hey, boys, boys, everyone. <laughs> Listen, sir, you must have some sort of plan in mind. What is it? When we hear what's going on over there. Listen, fellas, I've got some news, and the news that some of you are going to want to hear. Hey, who's he? His name is Sedgwick. Runs the general store. What is it, Sedgwick? Dick Martin's not entering the race. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like maybe I can win without using my plan. Come on, let's listen. Boys, you know, boys, don't crop me so loud. I don't know why Dick refuses to enter the race. I've told you all to know. He's not going to race, and that's his final word. Well, I don't believe it. I got it from Dick himself less than 20 minutes ago. Well, he's over at my house right now calling on my daughter. Well, I can't. There must be some reason why you won't enter this year's race. Nancy, please, I I don't think I can explain it so it'll make sense, even even to you. Please tell me, Dick. I'll understand if anyone will. Nancy, do you remember when I won the race a year ago? Of course I do. Why, you were just about the most important man in town. Your name was on everyone's list. And if I win the race this year, it'll be even more so. You object to that? Everyone is betting on me, Nancy, betting on me to win. They're betting heavily. What if I don't win? Oh, Dick. Sometime, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but sometime I'll be beaten. And then what? Then everyone will turn against me. Just as fast as they cheered me when I won last but year. Dick, I'll you... be a, a has-been. I'll be the one who lost the race and lost all the money that was bet on me. Everyone will turn against me just as quick as they turn to me. No, thanks. I don't want that. I don't want any part of it. You'd rather be a quit. There are other good dog teams, Nancy, and other good drivers. Someone else can represent Dawson and probably win. You know better than me. Well, I... I said it was...
Then have you sold out? What do you mean? Came past the cafe just after Sedgwick had announced that you were not going to compete. I... I'm not. Hmm. But I haven't sold out. A lot of ugly talk going around, Dick. A fellow named Scar Lafferty has a fast team entered in the race. He's counting on winning. In fact, he's pretty sure of it now that you're out of the running. I've heard of Scar Lafferty. At least half a dozen people think you have a deal with Lafferty. That's a lie. I have no deal with anyone. And I haven't sold out. I... I just don't want to compete, that's all. Care to tell me why? Oh, what's the use? No one will believe me, Sergeant. If, if they think I've got a deal with Lafferty, let them think so. Sit down there, Dick, and tell me about it. They turn against me if I don't race, and they'll turn against me if I race and lose. Well, how about trying to win? I can't win all the time. Someday I'll be beaten. Now, look here, Sergeant. I, I thought for sure my girl would understand my state of mind, but she didn't. She called me a quitter and a yellow coward. Nancy Sedgwick generally knows what she's talking yeah, about. Now, but I can't believe that you're either a quitter or a coward. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you just what I told her. Maybe you'll understand. Dick Maybe Martin talked for some time to give Sergeant Preston the same faltering explanation he had given Nancy Sedgwick. When he had finished, the Mountie said... Dick, let's walk over to the cafe. I think Nancy's father's still there. If he is, he'll not welcome me. He told me what he thought of me, and he didn't mince words. Come on, Dick. We'll tie King in back with your dogs. Well, all right. I'll go with you, but I don't know why I should. One, King. You too, Tundra. <laughs> Dick, I want you to hear the talk that's going around, the things that Sedgwick is saying. I think he's yellow. Uh, he's afraid of being licked. I don't believe that. I think he's sold out. He's got money in his pocket from not competing. Sedgwick's face was white with anger as he stood at one end of the lunch counter in the big cafe. He heard many of the comments that were going around. Finally, he could tolerate them no longer. You can't say Dick Martin's selling out. I said it, and I'll say it again. Oh, wait a minute, Moose. Uh, here's Dick Martin now. Yeah, the skunk that sold out all his pals in Dawson. That's so. Oh, oh, that's oh. your ticket. Get up, Moose. Get on your feet. You want to fight, fight someone your own age and wait. That's yeah. enough, Dick. No more fighting. Yeah, thanks, Dick. Well, I see you fight, but you won't raise. Huh? I've changed my mind about that. What's that? Listen, all of you. I don't want to go in that race. I had personal reasons for not wanting to go into it. But I... I guess that don't count. If any of you gents think I've sold out, you're wrong, and I'll prove it. My team's already entered, and I'm not going to withdraw. My dogs will run. That's your ticket. Eh, that don't prove a thing. I still say you sold out. 
You can run your dogs all right and run them so someone else will win. My dogs will be in that race and my dogs will win. Come on, Mr. Sedgwick. <laughs> well, Scott, looks like you'll have some competition after all. <laughs> it's all right, Penny. That means the plan I had in mind will have to be carried out. Now it's up to you to see that Martin's dogs don't win. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Start now before it's too late. Start collecting the new official challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. These are the keenest, most terrific, swellest trading cards you've ever seen. What's more, Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice are offering you these dog picture cards at no extra cost. These trading cards are new, different, the real McCoy. They're stiff back with the same shiny, glossy finish as game cards. Each card is made from a beautiful, true-to-life color Kodachrome photograph of a real dog, made specially for you. And only Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice offer these cards. There are 35 different cards in all. 35 famous breeds of dogs. There are popular dogs you all know and recognize, like Collie, English Bulldog, and Cocker Spaniel. There are dogs you maybe never even heard of, like Schnauzer or Saluki. Or the Otter Hound, a powerful, web-footed, underwater swimming breed that hunts the fighting otter. But dogs are real dogs. Many are champions of their breed. The photographs in full color are authentic. One of these trading cards is of King himself. Yes, Yukon King, the greatest husky in the North Country. On the back of every card, Sergeant Preston tells you what the dog is like. Whether he's a sporting dog like Foxhound. Or a working dog like Shetland Sheepdog. Or whether the dog is an alert watchdog or learns tricks easily. Don't wait to start collecting these terrific dog picture trading cards. You'll be the envy of everyone. But hurry. Time's a wasting, and there's only one way to get these cards. Simply go to your grocer, ask for the special new packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Inside each package, you'll find not one, but two of these keen dog picture cards. That's two cards, each different. There's no waiting, no delay, nothing to send in. No money, no coupons, no box top. And you get two different cards in each package. Ask for Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Get both delicious kinds. Then you'll have four of these official challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards in no time at all. That's how easy it is to collect them. So save them, swap them. Start now and get the complete set. Now to continue our story. The snow was in perfect condition the morning of the race. There was a hard crust to support the sled and give firm footing to the dogs and drivers. The contestants began arriving at the starting line an hour ahead of time, some with freight sleds and some with the more familiar basket type. Indians, Eskimos, and French Canadians were among the drivers. Scar Lafferty and his companions, Jules and Penny, were slightly apart from the others. Hey, you two, look over there. Dick Martin just brought up his sled and team. He's over yonder. Now, take a good look so as you'll know the outfit. Yeah, but, Scar, the trouble is there's more than a dozen sleds of the same type. And as for young Martin, when he comes along the home stretch, he'll probably have his park on, with a hood over his head and most of his face. The drivers will all look a lot alike. It'll be easy for you to pick out Martin's team. He's about the only one who'll use a big molly mute for a lead dog. Yeah. That's unusual. Well, most lead dogs are either Eskimos or Siberians. Tundra's the biggest lead dog in the race. Now, here's all you got to do. Go straight north for about two miles. You'll find a couple of great big boulders by the trail. Now, take up a spot behind them boulders and stay there until we're on the home stretch for the finish. Now, if you see that Martin is in the lead, you know what to do, huh? I wish there was some other way besides shooting him. There isn't any other way. I thought it all out. If you do anything to slow him up or turn his dogs aside, he'll see you and report it. What well, he is found shot, especially with a mountain. Who said hand? anything about it being found? Shoot him, knock him off his sled, and pick up the body and take it to that check we used a couple of weeks ago. I'll join you there after I collect the prize. No one will ever find Martin's remains, so no one will ever know what happened to him. Now, those are your orders. 
Trevia. Sure would be tough luck if we were to shoot him, only to have someone else ahead of you for first place. Now, listen, Penny. I've studied every team in the race. There's only one outfit can beat me. That's young Martins. You get rid of him, and I guarantee I'll have first prize money in my pocket when I meet you at the shack. You better start right now. Get set at the rock. And remember, watch for the leading team on the home stretch. If you see it's headed by my white Siberian, just lower your rifle and go on to the shag. But if the big Malamute Husky is in the lead, shoot fast and shoot straight. Aim for the head. Now get going. Okay, boy. Scar Lafferty watched Jules and Penny draw away from the crowd in the vicinity of the starting line, then turned his attention to his team of Huskies. In the meantime, Sergeant Preston was in the rear of Sedgwick's home. The storekeeper and his daughter Nancy watched while the Mountie lined up his dogs in double tandem hitch and snapped the traces to the gang line. Hold them on the line, King. I'll be with you in just a minute. Sergeant, does Dick know you're going to enter the race? No, as a matter of fact, no one knows it. But if no one knows it, Sergeant... I'm uh, not going over the course to win a dog race. I want to see that there's no underhanded business and... Uh... And what? Well, Nancy, I have another reason for entering that race, but I think I'll keep it to myself for the time being. You'd better hurry. It's almost time for the race to begin. I'd rather wait until after the start, but... Uh... You two had better get over the starting line. I think Dick Martin would want you there to see him. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, come on, Nancy. We'll be watching for you, Sergeant Preston. Indeed we shall. What's the matter, King? Anxious to get going? <laughs> All right, boy. Line. Line the team, King. The starting gun, they're underway. Now, King, we can go. All right. Run, King. Run, you have to <laughs> When Sergeant Preston reached the starting line, the other dog teams were well underway. King seemed to know what was expected. He led his mates at a fast pace across the icy crust and quickly overtook and passed the rearmost sleds. At the first turn to the left, he was just behind an Eskimo driver. He heard the sharp cries of command from the driver ahead. Then Sergeant Preston's ringing cry... King made the turn and then heard his master cry. That's it, King! All right, boy, all right, go ahead! King came abreast the Eskimo driver, then passed the sled and dogs and went ahead. That's it, boy, now let's pass the next one. Go ahead, King! A big French-Canadian was just ahead. King heard him shouting the typical command for a right turn. And then a moment later, Sergeant Preston cried out, Gee! Gee, King! That's it, boy, Gee! King cut down the distance to the next sled, went ahead, and then increased his speed to overtake and pass the others. At the halfway mark, the weaker teams began to falter and drop back, despite the cries of encouragement from the drivers. Then King saw that just two teams raced between him and the lead. Scar Lafferty's team was running strong. Once more, King increased the pace. In the meantime, Penny and the man called Jules were waiting behind big boulders one mile from the finish. Uh, how much longer do you think we must wait? It's hard to say. I figure we can look for the leading dog team to show up within the next half hour. Uh, you will uh, fire the shot, eh? Yeah. And one shot's got to do the trick. We must watch carefully. Make no mistake. All we've got to do is make sure that the white Siberian husky is not in the lead before we fire. Keep a sharp watch, Jules. When the first team comes around the bend, see what kind of dog is in the lead. Oui, monsieur. I watch. King was right alongside the lead dog in Scar Lafferty's team. It was a white dog with a black head. A smaller dog than King, a breed generally conceded to be faster than the heavily built Malamute. As he forged ahead, he heard words of encouragement. That's it, King. That does it, boy. Hey, you. You're in charge of pressure. What are you doing in the race? Tell you at the finish line. Come on, King. One more sled to hey, pass. You've got no business in this race. You didn't enter. What are you doing here? One, King. One more sled to pass. King saw it 50 yards ahead, and he saw the Malamute that led. A big dog like himself. In fact, one of his best friends, Dick Martin's Tundra. That's the team we want to beat. I'll let him out, King. Come on, King. On, you huskies. On, you huskies. Those were the familiar words that called for every ounce of King's great strength. The spirit of competition burned in his mighty breast. 
His great muscles rippled smoothly beneath his furry coat. Unkind! On, you husky! There were bells on Tundra and his teammates. King heard them jingling. The jingling came near, ever near. You can do it, fellas, a little faster. Hold there. At the pace, King. On, you husky! Come on, Tundra! King knew he had to beat his friend, Big Tundra. It was a matter of personal pride as well as a command from Sergeant Preston. On, King! On, you husky! Dave looked back and his eyes went wide in surprise when he recognized Sergeant Preston. King was even with the wheel dogs on the other sled. And then he came alongside Martin's wheel pair. Then the points. Now he was matching Tundra stride for stride. Come on, Tundra! Come on, Tundra! On, King! On, you husky! Teams were neck and neck for better than a hundred yards. And then, inch by inch, King took the lead. The jingling bells began to fade, and Tundra seemed to know he was beaten. The pace King set was more than any other dog could long maintain. Good boy, King! Neither the great dog King nor his sergeant master Preston suspected that Penny, with his death-dealing rifle, was waiting, watching for a Malamute behind big boulders one mile from the finish line. King knew he was well ahead of Tundra's team and all the other teams. He knew he was on the home stretch, the last leg of the grueling race. Sergeant Preston stood on the runners of the sled. He looked back, but Dick Martin, his nearest competitor, was still out of sight beyond the bend. You've done it, King, old fella. Now we'll see what happens when this race is over. Unkind! Sergeant Preston felt a blow like that of a sledgehammer on the back of his head. He fell forward, buckling over the back of his sled. His fingers clutched the rawhide lacing and hung on while consciousness expired. Dick Martin was too far back to know that anything had happened. But King knew. He heard the shot and Preston's gasp. He knew instinctively that something had hurt his master. The Mountie's final words, on King, still rang in the great dog's ears. A last command. So the mighty husky fought down the impulse to charge the man who had fired the shot. He held his place at the head of the team and raced on toward the finish line. Here comes the first one. Look at the lead he's got. Who is it? Everyone in town was waiting at the finish. Nancy and her father were among the crowd. Dad, whose team is that? I can't tell yet. I can't see much of the driver. He's hunched over. The lead dog is a Malamute. It's Sergeant Preston. That's his dog. It's King. And there's the second team. See it? Ah, Dick Martin's in second place. Hey, something's wrong with Sergeant Preston. What? He's fallen over the back of his sled. He's not moving. The crowd pressed close as King crossed the finish line. Sedgwick lifted the unconscious Mountie and placed him on the sled, while King whimpered in concern. Look at this, Dad. A bullet hole in the hood of his parka. Well, push your hood back, Nancy. We'll see how badly he's hit. He's regaining consciousness. Thank goodness he's alive. There. Now we can see the wound. My head. Now, take it easy, Sergeant Preston. I think you're going to be all right. I can tell for sure in just a minute. Let me see the wound, Sedgwick. I remember a rifle shot. How does it look, Dad? Oh, just brush the skin. You miss being killed by about a quarter of an inch, Sergeant. Oh, King, hear that, boy? Now stop it, fella. I'm going to be all right. I... Oh, now, don't oh. try to get up yet, Sergeant Preston. Well, I guess I'll have to wait a while. Have you any idea who shot you? No, I haven't. Oh, oh, camera, oh, 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 that's Martin. He's just crossing the finish line. You won the race. Hey, what's the matter? What's happened to Sergeant Preston? Dick, he's been shot. What? Who did it? How did it happen? I don't know, Dick. Huh? <laughs> King, what's the matter with you, fella? Quiet down now. I'll be all right. Hey, what ails that dog? He seems to be trying to tell me something. Stop tugging, King. I'll get up in a few minutes. I... You're not getting up for some time. We're going to take you to my house. King tugged and tugged on Sergeant Preston's parka, trying desperately to tell his master that he knew where the ambushers might be found. But no one, it seemed, understood what the mighty dog was trying to say. No one except King's friend, Tundra. Hey, Tundra, what's the matter with you? Whatever ails King must be contained. Now, let go, fella, let go. Stop trying to drag me away from here. Tundra would Tundra. not be sidetracked. Uh, he tugged at Dick's clothing and then tugged some more. And finally, Sergeant Preston understood. Dick, Tundra's trying to tell you to follow King in my place. Is that it? Is that it, Tundra? Go on, King. You'll be followed. Show the way, boy. On, King. Go on, Tundra. Follow King. I'll be with you, boy. Me, too. I'm going along. Same here. You may need help to get that ambusher. All right, I need a half a dozen. 
a number of men joined Dick who followed King and Tundra. It was two hours later when Dick and Sedgwick returned. Uh, Sergeant, I wish you could have seen the fun. King blazed the trail right enough. He showed us where the men had waited in ambush behind a couple of big boulders. Then followed their trail to a shack not far away. You got them? Ah, uh, we sure did. It was Jules and Penny. They tried to put up a fight, but they didn't have a chance with King and Tundra leading the attack. They told everything, Sergeant. They, uh, they didn't mean to shoot you. They intended to get me. Oh? Huh? They thought I'd be in the lead. But why do they want to shoot you? So their pal, Scar Lafferty, could win the race. He put them up to it. Well, we got him, too. The three of them are in the calaboose. About that race, Dick. <laughs> it's all right, Sergeant Preston. You beat me fair and square. Dick, <laughs> you're laughing about it. <laughs> I'm pleased about it, honey. I've always dreaded what would happen if I got beaten. I figured everyone would turn against me because I lost their bets, but no one did. Everyone says Dick made a darn good run and deserves a lot of credit. Oh, I was a fool to think as I did. I guess a man that's afraid of losing doesn't deserve to win. Well, at, at least the men in town know I didn't sell out to Scar Lafferty. Congratulations, Sergeant Preston. Dick, you won that race. <laughs> like fun. I wasn't even entered. I can't take the prize. When the excitement of capturing those crooks dies down, the judges will make the official announcement, and you'll be declared the winner. But you mean that? You're sure of it? Quite. Oh, then with that prize money, well... Well, gosh, Nancy, you and I, we... We can be married. Uh, that, that is if you'll still have me. I wouldn't want to quit her, Dick, but... You're no quitter. <laughs> oh, gee. Golly, Sergeant, this is the biggest day in my life. I not only won the race, but I learned that it won't be the end of everything when the time comes that I'm beaten. You've learned a lot, Dick. We'll take up the matter of the ambushes tomorrow morning, but your case, and this case, is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Don't wait. Don't put it off. But hurry. Start collecting official challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. Remember, you now get not one, but two of these terrific new dog picture cards inside each package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. That's two cards, each different. There are 35 different cards in all. A complete set of 35 famous breeds of dogs. These keen, stiff back cards have any trading cards you've ever seen beat a mile. They feature beautiful color photographs of real, authentic dogs. You get King himself. <laughs> These official dog picture cards are yours at no extra cost. And you get two different trading cards inside each package. So hurry to your grocer while his supply lasts. Ask for Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Get both delicious kinds. That way you'll get four cards right off. It's that easy to collect Challenge of the Yukon Dog Picture Cards. So get a move on. Start today. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Adventure in Selkirk. King and I arrived in Selkirk just after the bank was robbed. The constable was out of town, so with little to go on, we set out to trail the crooks. It turned out to be almost entirely up to King to find them. And when he did, it led us both into some mighty trying moments. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>